Okay, so hi. Um, I'm super excited to hear about this because you guys know I'm like negative green and I really need all the help I can get with this. Um, people are like, how do you make money? I'm like, I don't know. I just get paid a lot of money at the end of the month, uh, at the 15th of the month, but um, I'm not complaining. So, but I really feel like I can, you know, just learn how to maximize my check better. And so when you guys really started diving into the comp plan, um, cause you know, these are the people on here, are, you know, people who are going for diamond or who are already diamond and, um, just, it, it can get really overwhelming when you look at the comp plan and it's like, okay, well, I just want to know if I'm signing customers and I'm signing distributors, which we all are, how can I maximize my check? How can I make the most money? Um, so I'll let you, um, Mira, you can go ahead and go first and kind of share what you've learned along the way. That's kind of just like your aha moments about maximizing your check. Yeah, totally. And um, so, hi everybody. I'm Mira Denning. I'm a presidential diamond from Maine, and um, I have a lot of green. So um, I'll make up where <laughs> Kelsey doesn't have it. People tell me to turn off my green. So, um, so for just to like keep it super simple. Once you hit diamond, you know, you, we hear Mark say it's a license to print money. So kind of what does that mean? Um, and Brittany's going to, you know, co we'll kind of expand on this, I'm sure, too. But there's really two major things that happens um, that you guys should know about. First thing is that as you pop personally enroll diamonds, that's a great way to increase your check. We get generationals on that. But the thing that is actually most in our control are the caps are the leadership bonuses that open up at that time because personally enrolled diamonds you might have an amazing person develop that's like the third generation of somebody you personally enrolled and of course you're going to welcome and love and embrace somebody that you didn't personally enroll who's a leader but cabs you can track you can control you can influence you can kick out and so for me um it's something that it's is so critical like some people like Kelsey just are amazing and rock stars but some people you know um, and I'll put myself in this camp like I had to really study to figure out how to make your check but with caps you can literally take yourself if you understand both those things but with caps like I say that's the thing you're control you can take yourself from whatever rank you are average to the next average and that's why I've consistently been paid the next pay average you know this month was absolutely I was bawling I actually hit the ambassador pay average as a presidential that was because of caps and so um, it's just really really key um, to know them that's kind of why it's so important but it's really those two fundamental things um, that matter. I don't know, Brittany, if you want to kind of maybe explain cabs real quick to people that may just be like, what the heck are you talking about? Yeah. So I always like to tell people on my team who are not very green that cabs, think of them as like an extension of a fast start bonus. Um, when you sign a distributor and you are diamond or above, you're getting your fast start bonus just like everybody else, but then you are also getting a cap. Um, and that's um, in addition to the fast start bonus, and that comes on your monthly check. But in addition to that, every single person on your team who you have signed from Diamond on, everyone they sign, whenever they get their fast start bonus, you are getting a cap. So you basically, in a nutshell, and Mira and I are going to break this down, but you, you teach your team to prioritize fast starts over everything, and they never miss fast starts. And in turn, you will never miss caps. Go ahead, Mira. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, in terms of like, oh, I want to I wanna talk about how, I think a few things that we want to talk about. Um, how do we track, how do we even figure out what cabs are on the table for you? How do you track them? How do we influence people to um, go get their fast starts like Brittany's saying? And then other ways of, and tips and tricks um, that we have to basically promote duplication and get as much of a pool of caps because as Brittany just said if you can get if you're a diamond you're getting eighty dollars on all those people if you're getting a if you're a double you're getting 120 triple 135 prez 145 i will tell you guys my goal every single day is to kick out three cabs that's 500 bucks a day of extra money times 30 fifteen thousand dollars okay i'm not successful every day but that's my that's my goal so let me talk um a little bit about how I track things and then um, Brittany has a more formal system and I just encourage you to take from whatever you um, you know whatever style you like so I um, 
I use the diamond bonus report in eSuite. We're going to go real green now. We're going to start going green on you guys. And so the diamond bonus um, eSuite report. And what I do is that is a newer report. And I'll go into that. And one of the fields is date joined. And I will hit that so that I can see the people that are the furthest out. And so that kind of captures the third, who is up for a cab in the next 30 days. And so I'll hit date join. So I'm looking, today is April 11th. So I'll be looking at people who, um, if I, when I hit that, who join somewhere around March 12th to 15, 16, 17 that week. And so at least once a week, I'll go in and go about a week or two out and say, okay, where, you know, who do I need to um, uh, reach out to because they have, um, their, their folks are fast started, um, they don't have any LCs or whatever the circumstances is. And so that report by putting it in that like chronological order, I literally can see, you know, all, all of the money on the table, all the people. If you click on the info icon, it tells you who the enroller is. And so what I do is I'll go through that and especially for any cab for me that's um, $80 or above, um, I will um, voice memo the enroller and I'll say, hey, just wanted you to know that, and I'm usually about a week out, like I'm doing that a week out. So, so and so, like Amory is up for um, uh, her fast start for you in a, in a week. She has one LC. We need to get her to two LCs and 150. And I'll do that by voice memo because it starts a conversation that is just reinforcing that training. And they're, they're hearing from me personally and just like that connection. Oh my gosh, Mira is reaching out to me. This must be important. It just kind of reinforces the energy about chasing their fast start. And so it'll also often then dovetail into conversation about where they are with their LCs and all of that. So especially where, you know, pushing for ambassador, I'm talking to like everybody on my team that's enrolling people, working, et cetera. So it's creating that overall energy as well. So I use voice memos and that, that diamond bonus chart really going about a week out. So most days I'll have seven to 15 people that have some kind of cab open. So it's, it, it's literally 10 minutes of my time to follow up about a week ahead by voice memos with the enrollers. Um, and so that real quick because oh, yeah, thing that was super helpful to me when I started looking at that diamond bonus report is if you click the box to the left of the line, it pops up. Cause like when I first looked at it, I was like, who the frick is the enroller now? <laughs> to explore and figure out all this stuff. And it felt like it was like, like it was almost like there wasn't enough information for me to do anything with it. And I saw all these random names, but I didn't know who they were connected to. And so if you click on the left-hand side, there's like a box. It looks like a check mark box that's empty. If you click it, you will see, it will load and it will say who the enroller is in their email. And they're the new distributors contact info as well. And so it is definitely like available to you. So I didn't know that it was there. So just for all of you people who aren't like just in eSuite all the time, checking it out, um, go click that box because that box has almost all the information you'll need and it will have an, a button for you to email them from eSuite, which is pretty cool if you have like an email that you can have set up um, to run, which is cool. And then if you double click the date for all you non-greens out there, if you double click the date, it'll organize it by date. Okay, so that's just how you can sort it if you need like step by step instructions like I do. <laughs> so yeah, just like <laughs> well, and that so that that's what I do. And I think also when you're a diamond or you're a double diamond, you're gonna know everybody on your team. Like I did, you know. Obviously, you get to be presidential or ambassador, like Miss Kelsey. Like it gets harder, but you guys are gonna look at the enroller and be like, I know, you know, like you know that person. You're probably already working with them. So, um, so that's kind of the first step. It's very informal, and then I use my It Works planner. Um, to, I set up all the information for that day, a week ahead, so I can track like what happens over the next week. And kind of follow up and, and that, but it's only, it only takes me like, like I said, 10 or 15 minutes a day for those few people. Um, a Brittany's f tracking system is even more formal and I think some people might love it. The other thing though, that I can add that I think has been a absolute game changer for me 
is that I started when I started like building diamond charts for you know Prez and then Ambassador. So you know you have a stack of diamond charts. You're working with people on their promotions. I don't just put the diamond chart stuff that we all do, like the names and the and the BV and the tracking. I've now added when fast start deadlines are. So if for example I had um, a woman come in in January and she's just been crushing it. So she went diamond in March. So um, she, she and her team have been enrolling so many new distributors that were Prez coded to me because she signed under me. So what I did is, you know, I take a, a diamond chart and this is like super messy now. So instead of just having the names in the BB, I'm also writing in um, uh, fast start deadlines across the team on that chart. Why is that helpful? Because when I'm literally living with these teams and these in front of me, I can say, okay, LCs come in, put them under here for your fast start, and this will also build out your ruby or your emerald or your diamond. And also, you know, when they're when we're looking at and trying to chase fast starts, I don't have to go to three different places to find all that information plus build the diamond. So I have so many times where newer people are coming to me and like, where should I place? Or, you know, um, uh, what do I need to do for my promotion? And to have all the information on the chart both the fast start deadlines and different boxes. And then if there's people stacked, I'll just write a line underneath a box and, and put the other people's names in their fast start deadline. And it allows me to help them with everything at one time. Rank ups, fast starts, cabs for me. And it's just been a game changer in how I've organized information and kicked out a lot of, a lot of cabs um, on mass. So Brittany, maybe do you wanna talk about like kind of your, your email system? Yeah, for sure. So I do things a little bit different. I actually don't use the diamond report just because um, it doesn't show if they're fast or qualified. So I've always used leadership level by qualification or leadership level qualification by period um, because that one does show if they're fast or qualified or not. Um, it'll have two check marks, fast or qualified, fast or qualified 30 days. Um, and so it allows me to like, just the way my mind works, I can quickly scan through there. And if I see double checks, then I just keep going. But when I come to the double X's, I'm like, okay, what do we need to do here? So um, in some cases, it may show that they have two customers, but they have the double X's for not being fast or qualified and not being fast or qualified in 30 days because they um, don't have an auto shipment set up. Um, and so I have an email that I send out for that that I'll talk about in just a second. And then sometimes we come across it and they have no customers whatsoever. So kind of what our system is, um, oh, someone asked in the chat, it's leadership level qualification by period. Um, and it's in your main reports. It's going to be in the middle section. Um, but anyways, I go to the very end of the report and I just, like I said, I start Did she freeze for anybody else? Oh, okay. I was like, uh, did my feel thing? We just go through and, oh, am I still frozen? Okay, you're good now. Okay, sorry. What what was the last thing you guys heard? <laughs> Not uh, like, oh, okay. a, like a long time ago, I think. <laughs> the report name, leadership level. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, leadership level qualification by period. Um, so what we do is we go through, did y'all hear what I was explaining about double check marks, double X's? No. Okay. I'll just go through this really fast. <laughs> okay. So what I love about leadership level qualification by period is it shows you if they're fast or qualified or not. And the, whereas the other report doesn't actually, so you could see that they have customers in the diamond report, but you don't actually see if they're fast or qualified. So for example, it could say they had two customers, but they don't have an auto shipment set up and then they're not actually at 150. So that's why I use the older one. Um, but basically the way my mind works is when I'm going through it, if I see double check marks, I know I'm good. 
Um, and then if I see X's, I stop and take a closer look and see what we're working with. So in some cases, we may have the customers, but they're not at 150 and it'll tell you that. And then in certain cases, um, it'll they don't have any customers whatsoever. And so what our system is, and this works really well for us, is I do all the placements for cabs and I understand the report really well and know exactly where to place, but my husband takes over the emailing because um, that's something that he can easily do during the day. You know, And like once a week, he just sends out a batch of emails. So what we do is um, anyone that it's been about two weeks and they do not have their person fast start qualified because like Kelsey was sharing, you see who the enroller is. You see who the, who the distributor is, who's not fast start qualified, and you see who the enroller is. So Zach will just go through and he'll email um, whoever has like two weeks or less. And he'll just basically say like, you know, hey, um, we just wanted to check in and let you know that, you know, Sally is not yet fast start qualified. Um, she needs one more customer. Um, or maybe she's got two customers and she doesn't have an auto set up. He'll say she's got her two customers, but because she doesn't have an 80 BB auto shipment set up, she needs 60 more BB. Make sure to get this, um, you know, by whatever date so you can get her fast start bonus and she can be fast start qualified. Um, I'm giving you guys the Cliff Notes version. I can share the emails with all the leaders on the team. That way they can share it with all of their downline so you guys can have it. We have two different ones one for if they have customers but don't have an auto set up, and then one if they don't have any customers at all. Um, but it's been so fruitful because, I mean, it takes staff like an hour a week to send out emails, but what we're seeing is people go out and get their people fast start qualified. Um, we had a Zoom with Pam a while ago. Kelsey was actually on it. Mira was on it. Um, and Pam said, like, don't assume that your, your new distributors that just signed a new distributor, like, don't assume they know like right away about their fast start bonus. Like you could just be thinking, oh, they're not getting it done. In reality, they don't even know they're going to get a hundred dollar bonus. And so what we have found is just taking the time to send the emails out. We're not missing very many caps because people are getting it done themselves. And then if there is that situation where the enroller of the new distributor has quit or something, I mean, I'll place for that because that's, you know, I'm not going to leave that money on the table, but for the most part, the emails take care of themselves. So I'll, I'll share that after. Don't worry. We'll make sure that gets passed around. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much our system. It's just going through that report. Um, if you look in your e-suite, basically just go to leadership level qualification by period, go to the very end. Um, so if you have like 15 pages or 30 pages, you're just going to go to the end and you're just going to start, you know, go, working your way back and any that have double checks, you're good. Your, your cab is safe. You're getting the cab. Um, and then any that don't, that's what you need to, you know, do to contact the person. And so you can do whatever's comfortable for you. Mira was talking about voice messaging. We do the email. What we love about the email is that if there's a lot on the table, like literally Zach can just sit there at the computer and just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And all he has to do is plug their name in. Um, and like Kelsey said, you can email straight from eSuite. So it's super time, like time efficient. That's awesome. Um, and so, you know, we're, I want to give Britt a shout out too, because she earned $20,000 in cabs last month. You guys, I just wanted to give you a sense of what's possible. I mean, that's more than a prez average by like a check average by a ton, 20,000. All right, so that's the amount of money we're talking about. Um, so I want to talk about a couple things that just pivoting a little bit to, okay, how, you know, this is how you're tracking and obviously you're communicating, but what are other ways to make sure that you maximize the whole cab system? And for me, there, my whole kind of strength in the business is about really promoting duplication in all sorts of ways, but this is definitely one way that I've seen this. So the first thing is, especially when you go through a huge onslaught of new distributors. So obviously the last few months with all these $20 um, distributors, there's so many new people coming in. Um, and like Brittany was saying, some of them, not only do you have their cabs, um, but you've got them recruiting right away on $20. So you just have these huge influx and it's really important to educate your team about fast starts. Um, and so beyond just the email. So I have, for example, I, once a week we do, um, I do a, a training for my team on, live on our team page and about once every six to eight weeks, I'll make sure I, I, really say what's you know it's literally called literally what's the easiest way to make a hundred dollars in this business and then i'll do the whole training on fast start so just you know whatever that means for your team making sure you're training them how how um how this is such an important way to get paid um and, and maximize the check their check the fast starts 
Um, and then also during huge enrollment um, cycles, so like when there's suddenly, oh my gosh, we've enrolled like 300 people in a month, um, I'll usually do a post on my team page and say, okay, everybody who's um, signed at least two people, can you comment below? And I'll put them in a chat. I'll be like, all right, it's, you know, it's called something like, you know, cute or energetic, like fast start nation. And I'll be like, all right, guys, we're gonna get all your fast starts, you know, in the chat. I want to hear, you know, like, who needs to, like, who needs, um, you know, some support or how to get deadlines or whatever, you know, really explaining them the, the technical side of how they can track their fast starts. Um, in the chat, and that way, you know, I've got all the people who've signed two, three, five, ten, whatever people in one chat, and can basically follow through that way. So um, we do that. Um, and then the last thing that's been really huge for my team, and um, in, in just exploding sort of the number of cabs I'm getting is we started training on recruitment. Okay, so this is not a recruitment Zoom. I don't want. To, that's not where I'm going with this. But what I want to say is that I feel like having been around the business for four years, there's a lot of amazing trainings, whether it's company developed or team developed for new distributors when they first come in. How do you get your four? You know, like kind of that newbie training where I think we all fall down um, or there's a lot of, you know, gaps is when somebody's in week four to six, how do we train them to start recruiting? Okay, so we don't, there's, yeah, there's YouTube videos, but I mean like really hands-on training on to be comfortable because about 70, 80% of the people at that time are still being so nervous about pitching the business. So we developed a week long training. Um, it's a virtual training that I do every, pretty much every month at the beginning called the Ruby and recruitment training. And I literally day to day we go through how to post why posts what's a lifestyle post and they have daily assignments to do all that as a as a peer group and then and then we go into messaging and your chicken list and all sorts of things so it's kind of an interactive week-long recruitment training and what happened you guys is when i really invested in developing a system to train recruitment in weeks you know for most people they're in week three to six at that time um our team exploded from about 250 people um, a year ago today. Guys, we're at 1,700 today. And I am four years in the business. So at three years in my business, I had, I don't know, 250, three, less than 300 people. And I'm sitting here with 1,700 today. And that 95% of those people were double diamond, triple diamond, or presidential diamond cap to me. 95%. So think about the, do the math. <laughs> Because I'll tell you, I did. And so really, that single-handedly changed my, that's when I went, you know, prez or whatever off of that. So just a huge thing. Think, I mean, it's, I don't want to take over this training on that, but I do feel like there's a gap in training people systematically how to recruit, be comfortable with it, be confident, what's the messaging. And, um, and I just, that's where if you can duplicate recruitment, the number of caps is going to grow enormously. So I don't know, uh, Britt, I know, sorry, you'll probably take it in a completely different direction, but, but those were a couple tips I had. No, I love that. I love all that so much. I think that that I'll pick, definitely piggyback on that in a second, because I, I was definitely going to say something about how if we don't like so often we can get so focused on customers and like certain things, but at the end of the day, how you continue the calves is by recruitment. So I'll come back to that. I want to say one thing before I forget. Um, but one thing that like Mira mentioned about getting everyone in a chat to get their people fast start qualified, like saying on our team page, like who has signed two or more people and then putting them in chat. So one thing that I have found is really helpful kind of along those lines is if I know someone on my team is fairly new, but they are taking off really quickly um, and enrolling new distributors. I'm telling them right out of the gates, like, hey, as you're signing customers, go to your fast start qualification report and start at the bottom and work your way up. And you're going to place two, 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 two. And you're going to make sure you get everybody fast start qualified. And then, of course, I'm telling them, and if they don't have an auto up and it's a low BB customer, you may have to do more than two. But I'm teaching them that that is how they place, that they're not placing, you know, all over their chart in all these different areas. It's for fast starts. You don't place anywhere else until all of your fast starts are accounted for. Um, and that is like the law on my team is we place for fast starts over everything else. And so if we're going for a promotion, we're not, we're not pulling out. And I know that this is, 
like different people train differently on this, but I'm just telling you this is what we do and what works for us. Um, we don't pull out like the next chart until the first chart is solid. So if it's a, if you're charted, you know, if someone's charted diamond, but it is a bare diamond chart as far as volume goes, like every box still needs 400. They're not going to go start charting double. They're going to stack in all those spots on their diamond. That way, as they're placing for fast starts, they're also getting the volume they need to promote. And that has been so, so huge. Um, the month I went presidential in November, I signed 40 distributors and I wasn't placing them on my ambassador. I was stacking them all over my presidential. And what I ended up getting from that was $4,000 in fast starts, all those cabs, and I got the volume I needed in the right spots. And then the next month, everyone was maintaining on the 25th because I had made all those legs so strong. And so that is just, for me, huge. Um, and if there's anything you take away from like just maybe something that I do do differently than maybe what you've heard, it's that because it makes all the difference in the world. I hear, I feel like in the business we see so often, like you have a Ruby and I was telling Mira this this morning, like you have a Ruby that's like charted triple diamond. And I'm like, okay, that's great, but you need to get in and so let's like pull out too many charts like let's make this strong so that's that and then i teach them again just play like pull out that fast start qualification report and same goes for everyone on here that's diamond or above like that is how you should be placing before you are start placing for your calves place for your fast starts go to the fast start qualification report start at the bottom if they are still showing in that report you still have time um so i know a lot of people like especially with february at the end of march they're like oh do i still have time but february was a short month so they actually had longer than they thought but that report will always be accurate for you if the name is still there you still have time to place for it um and wait, then, wait, 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 pretty. i want to say something real quick because just yeah. so you guys can like hear this because if you are like red or money driven at all, like you need to like start sweating because that is so much money that Brittany brought in by herself. If you think about that. And I know some of you on here are mass rec recruiters. Okay. So some of you on here might be signing 40, 20 to 40 distributors a month. Okay. And if you think about that, so she wasn't even pressed. She was triple. So she was triple coded at that point to every single one of those 40 distributors. That's 135. So if you multiply 135 by the 40 distributors that she got, that's $5,400 plus the $4,000 in fast starts that she got. So just from that, just by getting all of those people fast start qualified, that is literally almost $10,000. It's $9,400 that she brought in. You guys, that is like the checks that you guys are going for. And that's not even including the commissions. Are you serious? Like you guys have to like think about this because I don't think that I realized this for a long time. Um, I was like, yep, I'm just getting people if I start qualify, placing two distributors. Okay. But like, and I probably didn't even realize this for way too long. And so my team's on here being like, well, my mind's blown because Kelsey's never taught us any of this crap. And I'm like, I know because I'm just learning this crap. Okay. So, um, but just seriously, I want you guys to all think about that because that is truly, truly where so much of the money in our comp plan can come from. Some comp, this is what I've learned. Some comp plans are front loaded. Okay. So people will go to a company and they'll make a crap ton of money when you first start out. And then that piddles off. Okay. Some comp plans are backloaded, meaning, you know, you can work and you can make a lot later on and it's, and it sticks for a while. The beautiful thing about our comp plan is it's both. You get the fast start up front and cabs are the gift that keeps on giving. Okay. And that is a little bit that my non green personality knows, but I'm going to tell you that, yes, if you look at how many cabs that I've missed, Heather, I'm about to puke too, because I've literally like, it's literally like me lighting money on fire. Oh, just out the door, down the drain. And so I want you guys to seriously take this so serious. Like this is like, I love what Mira said at the beginning. I don't remember how much you said your goal was, but each day is to get, you know, whatever, three calves done or, and, and create that goal for yourself. Literally create that goal for yourself because that will change the game because that's when you really truly start becoming a business owner. This is not like some, some side deal. Like if you want this to pay you like a business, 
you need to treat it like a business. That means sending out emails. It's painful for people like me. I know it's hard. Okay. Nobody said that like this was going to be all like, Oh yep, Let me just do some self-development. This is what I wish I could do. Just self-development all day long and chat with my team. Okay. But sometimes you just have to sit down and do some of this stuff that is required of being a business owner. You guys are making business owner money. Go ahead and treat it like a business so you can duplicate it. Okay. I'm done. Sorry. I had to get on my soapbox. That is so crazy. It's literally like 10, 10 grand just from you, just right there. No commissions, cabs and fast starts only. It's crazy. Well, along those lines, that was where I was wrapping that statement up was just never miss a fast start. Just tell yourself from this day forward, you will never miss a fast start. Um, the only time I ever missed any fast starts, you guys, which I don't know if all of you guys were around for this, but in the 999 days, I know Mary and Kelsey know what I'm talking about. That month I signed 40 and I think I missed like seven or eight. And you guys, I literally like still feel guilty about it to this day. I'm like, what was I, because I just like, I don't know. I just gone triple and I was just like living it up after promoting triple. And I'm like, Oh, it's okay. And then later I'm like, what the heck? Cause then I realized I missed the cab and the fast starts. So literally since then, like I have not missed a single fast start and I don't care if like, I have to like literally just go above and beyond and get like so much extra work done to make it happen. Um, but that I'm, I'm just not going to leave that money on the table. Cause like, like Kelsey said, like, it's literally like lighting money on fire. So that being said, treat your fast starts that way. Make sure your team treats fast starts that seriously, but then treat calves that way too. Like go ahead and just treat calves as truly an extension of fast starts. Um, and then along the lines of what Mira said, this is what I want to wrap up with before I pass it back to her was just the way that you continuously grow your calves and you continuously have calves to place for, um, is by recruiting. And so just getting in that mindset that, okay, we always have to be growing. Yes, we want customers, but we also want to always be growing our team. Um, and like Mira said, this, this isn't what that Zoom is about, but I do think that it's something so important just to ride out the gates, make sure that, you know, just little things you're doing to grow your team. So for example, every one on my team signs their husband right, right away. When they get their first four customers, the first thing they do is sign their husband. If they're not married, they're signing their boyfriend. If they don't have a boyfriend, they're signing their mom. They're signing someone and putting in that spouse like account and they're going ahead and working on them while they're, you know, still attracting more distributors to them or reaching out to new potential distributors, whatever. Um, but that is an easy first distributor for them. Even if they feel like they don't have anyone they know interested in the business, they can sign someone for that spot and boom, that's a fast start for them. And then they're building their chart right out of the gates, but then that is, you know, just continuing on the cast. And so we, we train that across the board. And I can honestly say, I don't think I have anyone on my team, except maybe someone that's brand new and just signed like yesterday that doesn't have their spouse signed up. So um, I think that's just another just great thing to do that just keeps everything flowing. So anyways, Mira, I'll hand it to you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, Listen, I don't have a lot of tips, but I'll have some inspiration for a, for a minute here. So just to give a sense, you guys, I, um, my diamond checks were 3,500 because of caps. My double diamond checks were up to $10,000 because of caps. So you're going to hear crazy numbers out of Brittany and, and me right now. But I, when I just think about when I was a diamond and working full time, and this was such, the difference between being 2,000 and 3,500 was this. And it really changed my life in, on, when compounded. And again, double diamond checks up to 10,000. I mean, just crazy money. And so I just really encourage you, like develop what system works for you. And um, I, Brittany, I think you said this a little bit differently a minute ago, but one of the things that Brittany said to me a few times that I absolutely am obsessed with is treat a cab like a fast start. Cause I remember when I started like those, those hundred dollar fast starts when I was my first month, I would never miss those. I was so excited that that was possible. So treat your calves, those, those 80, 120, 135, whatever it is, treat those exactly like a fast start. Never miss one. Have that intention. And you will be in, insanely excited about the amount of money added to your check. Um, does anybody have any questions for us? Let's see here. Yeah. So one thing I think that somebody wanted to know is like how to, and this is a good question, how to explain this to like your new teammates. And one thing that I would like for you guys to touch on too is to take it a step further is like, let's say you're helping somebody go Ruby and you're placing DTs on their team. So they're not getting a cab and they're not getting a fast start. How to keep their best interest in mind, right? And like 
help helping put it that explanation of, Hey, put your customers there without seeming like selfish. Because I think that that's what a lot of um, some of my, my team feels is like, well, how do I, how do I help them understand like why this benefits them and how, what is your guys verbiage when it comes to that? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, if they're like just building out a Ruby chart and they do have fast starts and I have fast starts, I'll always coach them to go after their fast starts, not mine. You know what I mean? So it's only like, let's say that they filled a box or it's in pretty good shape or whatever somebody's under them is working. So we don't really need to fill them, but we need to fill the person I sign. Then it's really about their promotion. And you know, we've got the Ruby gear. <laughs> we've got the Ruby guarantee, the Emerald guarantee, whatever that is. That's when, um, uh, you know, you, you have that as, as well as motivation. So I, I really put it in terms of their, their promotion, Kelsey, you know, or if, if like Brittany's saying, let's say they have their first or second distributor and it's somebody I put under them. Um, I can just explain we're filling, we're filling. So you can go for executive and Ruby, but I would never like, personally, I would never have them not go for their own fast art first. So I do do that for sure. If, if there's a, all of it, all of the above. So I don't know if that helps, but I really do focus on the, their promotion and their, their goals. I wanted to say something about that too. So like Mira, I always have them place for their own fast starts first. That's like 100% a given. They get their own fast starts and then they place for mine. Um, but I don't feel bad about them placing customers under the people I place into them because guys, this is a business and you have to treat this like a business. You're a business owner. And if you place distributors under one of your distributors, like there has, it has to be a mutually beneficial relationship. Like you are placing distributors under them and you're helping them. But in turn, like you're giving them a huge jump start. like them placing, you know, getting those people fast start qualified. Like that is expected of me from, that is what I expect of my distributors that I do build. If I place under them and they do not get those people fast start qualified and I have to swoop it at the last second and do it, I don't place there anymore because that just shows me they're not really taking that business relationship between us seriously. And it is something I talked to with them about it whenever I first place, but um, that's something my team knows. Like if I place under you, I expect them to get fast start qualified, whether that, whether they get themselves fast start qualified or they, you know, the distributor place does it. Um, but I think, you know, when you look at it from that light, like this is a business, you could have chosen anyone on your team to place that distributor under, like naturally you want who you're working with to be a good steward of the resources that you're giving them. Um, and so I would never look at it like, oh, I'm just asking them to do something for me. Like, cause I just did something for them. You know what I mean? And it's, it's gotta be mutually beneficial. So, um, hopefully, especially for anyone watching that is maybe more of a yellow leader, like that just kind of clears it up in your head because I do think that's something I'll have my, like some of my leaders will come to me and like, I'm awkward. I feel awkward, you know, going to them about this. How do I say it? I'm like, it's business. It really is like, you're helping them. They're helping you. It's really not a big deal, you know? Yeah, no, I love that. And I definitely think that it is, it is like, and I mean, it's a, it's a valid concern until you put it in and understand why it's beneficial for both people and really leading with, okay, this is why it's beneficial for you is because it's helping you get to your promotion, right? And you're helping them help themselves. Um, and they would have no distributor to put any customers under if it wasn't for you. Um, and yes, and it is a lot less awkward, Amanda, when you do have that conversation about expectations before. And this is a tip I will give anybody is setting the expectation and the standard that you expect from the start with your new distributors. Like not even just when you place somebody under, them, but what you expect out of them. You know, I often tell my new distributors like, hey, like I know this feels is going to feel overwhelming. The only thing I expect from you is to communicate with me you're going to feel overwhelmed. I'm not saying you have to sign a certain customer by then. I'm not saying there's the deadlines from that. I just want you to communicate with me. If I call you and you can't answer, just let me know that you're going to call me back and make sure we're having that open line of communication because I know if I'm communicating with them, I can teach them how to do what they're supposed to do. Um, okay. So Erica said, um, uh, a lot of other dirty teeth have been people that approach them. I always have potential distributors approach me, but are there any little tricks that you guys have on how to reach out? Um, let's see. I know Brittany does mostly attraction marketing. Um, Mira, do you have any tips on how to reach out for potential distributors? I guess is what the question is. Sorry. I need to unmute myself. Um, 
So to reach out to people cold message, I mean, basically what I do, I, I, it's so funny, we had to try it in Portland and I got asked the same question. Um, so if I, I do a lot of attraction marketing too, which helps a lot because then when I'm messaging people, even if it's, if it's a first contact from me to them, as opposed to them reaching out to me, they, they usually often have some kind of brand. So, I mean, listen, honestly, it's just a really simple um, message that I send. It'll just be something straightforward, like, you know, Hey, Kelsey, um, I don't know if you've been seeing my posts, but I really actually think it'd be amazing at what I'm doing. Have you ever thought about doing something on the side for extra income? Um, you, you know, your posts have just jumped out of me. So I just compliment them. Um, I um, am very light about it, so that it's not like intense <laughs> and intimidating. And I always use that question um, have you ever thought about doing something on the side for extra income? Um, and because it's just open ended, it's not like, are you interested in joining my team? <laughs> you know, it's not like hard, hard, um, a hard question. Um, Kelsey, was did I get to her question? I think I interpreted it correctly. Yeah, I think you did. Um, okay. Some people. And so yeah, so what I would do is. Um, Sorry. So then what I would do also is the way that I recruit when I'm messaging is I really follow my intuition. So one of the things I'll say is sometimes we get into a checklist world where we're like, we've got to message 35 people today. Right. And I do have a, a message approach on our team. Um, but those numbers can sometimes shut down your intuition. So really use your intuition. Like who's jumping out at you? Who is your gut telling you, oh my gosh, I should write, a person, write this person, I should write this person, I should write this person. Use that instinct that's shouting at you. Don't just use your Facebook friends and like go down A, B, C, D, E. Like really try to be intentional about who you're writing. And, um, and you'll have, I don't know, there's just something about like the little spiritual connection if you really follow your gut. Like just the interest and response is so much higher. Yeah, I totally agree. I definitely think... Um it can, it can get monotonous and you're like, okay, I got to send out all these messages. Um, but when you kind of just like, I mean, I, I pray about it. I mean, I send out messages and stuff, but I definitely am like try to be super intentional with, um, it, is this really somebody that I want on my team? You know, um, is this somebody that I want to work with based on what I'm seeing from their profile? And some people will surprise you. You never know. Um, you know, they might be like, you, they may, they might even message you and you're like, yeah. I'm not sure about this one. And then they hop on your team and they're just amazing. Um, so you just don't, you don't know, but, um, I love that. I love that advice. That's, that's a good point of sometimes the checklist can kind of dumb down your intuition. That's so true. So, um, are we going to go over gins? Like gins? Are we, are we, we can, if you want. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just wondering, is somebody going to screen share so we can look at like the comp plan? Oh, um, man. <laughs> I think, I really think that that's probably like the easiest way to do it. I can even share my screen if you guys want to guide or walk through it. Um, I, this, this is one of the things that I really don't understand. So it might be helpful um, if you do that. Yeah, and it is 32 days to earn a cab, right? The yeah. Month. Okay. The faster in the cab, it's 32. Okay. And there can I wait is day one. Huh? Yeah. Can I just give a tip on that, Kelsey? Because this will blow minds of people who aren't green. Okay. You ready for the tip? Because I swear to God, in the VIP page, like on the daily, there's like, okay, this person's tired of this. What is the faster? So it's one of the most confusing things that people get overwhelmed with. Here's my tip. If the month before had 31 days, then it's the same number day the next month. So they, if... March had 31 days, so if they sign in April, um, March 14th, it's April 14th. If the month before had 30 days, then it's one extra day. So then it would be, so then if for April 14th, it'll be May 15th. You got it. That's all you need to know. 30 or 31 days. Done? Good. Okay. <laughs> Very simple system. No, February just F's everything up. Yeah, forget February. February yeah. sucks. <laughs> we'll just forget about February. In so many ways. <laughs> um, that, that's awesome. And then, uh, Brittany, you said that the start date is, is, the, is day one. And then yeah, so it's 32 days. So Mira's way is easier. But if you ever are just like going crazy and you're feeling the need to count 32 days, start date is day one. It's not the next day. That, that's okay, cool. Um, are you guys, do you guys feel 
prepared to cover gins. I mean, I guess this stuff you could probably do in your sleep, but this makes me have a little <laughs> bit of anxiety. Uh, well, you know what's you know what's interesting, Kelsey. Like, I'm happy to cover it, but I, Brittany, push back if you don't if you disagree. But I almost feel like, listen, cabs are something that you can influence on a daily. In t- like super intentional basis, you really can't influence your gens in, in a lot, like in a deep way, in the sense that, you know, the cream's going to rise and they're personally yeah. rolled or they're not yeah. and they're placed where they are. And so, I mean, push back for it if you disagree, but, but I feel like if you're going to take control of your check, a lot of it is around caps. Yeah, 100%. I I think a lot of people think generations are so much more than they are. They are nice. They add a lot to your check. Don't get me wrong. But if you are sitting down and you're like, how can I give myself a massive raise this month? How can my check be so far above average the next month? The reason Mira and I both got paid as like on actually higher than ambassador average pay this month is because of cabs. It wasn't because of gents. Like if we didn't have our cabs, I mean, my check would have been $20,000 less if it wasn't for cabs. So $20,000 like because of this quick tip. What? Hold on. I got to mute. Somebody wasn't muted. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but anyways, that being said, the gents are awesome, but like there's so many factors, like if they're not personally enrolled and stuff like that. And like for the longest time, like all my diamonds on my team were personally enrolled, but like the last couple of months, like I've had so many that pop that aren't. Um, and that's great and all. I'm so happy that my team's exploding. But at the end of the day, I sit down and I get those cabs and that's what's skyrocketing my check. So I totally agree, Amir. Yeah. And one thing that I want to say too, just to add to that is if you are like so frustrated because all you're trying to do is get to diamond and you feel like you're freaking dragging people, you might realize when you get to diamond and have dragged people it was the biggest blessing because you'll sign all of your rock stars after you go diamond <laughs> and everybody will be 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. And you'll be like, Oh my gosh, that is crazy. So like, you just really don't know. Um, and, and that's why everybody says just get to diamond and you'll figure out the rest. Um, and it's so true because you do have like a huge key to unlock the compensation plan. And so don't necessarily, um, get frustrated with that and just know that the people who are meant to be in your business are going to come into your business. And sometimes you don't always know what's best until you get there and you're like, Oh, that's why. And I feel like too, like I, that's kind of what happened for me is I, I only have Brian, my husband, that's like left on my freaking diamond chart. Like that's it. And you know, that's why I feel like when I went diamond, I was making double checks and all that stuff, but I didn't, I didn't know it, but I was like, Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, and so it is important for you guys to look and see that value of it too, because once people are, you know, coded to you, it can change the game and everybody that they sign until they go diamond is always coded to you because the coding will never change um, until they, that individual person goes diamond. Um, and so I just want you guys to kind of touch on it and you don't have to give like a ton of detail, but because I do, I do agree. I don't, obviously there's not a lot that you can control when it comes to this. You need to work with who's working and you know, does that not, it doesn't matter. You know, like you can't be like, Oh, I'm going to choose this person because they're personally enrolled and they're not freaking working. That's not going to make sense for your chart either. Right. Um, but, and so this is not to tell you who you should work with. What this is going to tell you is where some of the money from your check is coming from. If you need an explanation. And that is why I think it will be beneficial, um, for you to see this and see, okay, well maybe this is why I'm making more, um, and what I can do to, to do more. But the key you guys to this whole business, I've always said this, the key to this whole business is building leaders and teaching your leaders how to build leaders. If you can do that, you will be a millionaire in this business. That's, that's, that's the basic of basis of what you need to learn. And their, your leaders don't even need to be personally enrolled. Okay. That's, that's it. You're going to see that this number might look different, but the reality of it is if you're building leaders and you're teaching your team to build leaders, you're going to make a lot of money. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. One of you guys can just take it away. Let me make sure I don't have, okay. Can you guys see this? Am I blocking anything? No, that's perfect. Okay. All right. Brittany, do you want to do it? <laughs> I can 
start and then I'll hand it over to you to like finalize details because you're smarter than me. No. Uh, but okay, so simplest thing to know with generations is that anyone that is personally enrolled to you, you are getting a 5% enroller bonus on. So in addition to the base number you're going to see on here, you're getting 5%. Um, and so that doesn't matter where they are on your chart. They could be on your top line. They could be three generations down. If they are personally enrolled to you, you're getting 5%. But then what level they're on is what, or what generation diamond they're on is what's going to determine how much more you get. Um, so I'm just going to give a couple examples that I feel like are helpful, especially if you're not super green. And then I'm going to let Mira take it away and get more technical. But for example, like I have quite a few diamonds directly under my husband. My husband's on my top line. So I get the 5% enroller bonus on those diamonds, but then he is getting 4% because they are on his top line. And then I'm getting an extra 2% because that's my, it, it's a generation under him. So I get 9% off him because he's my personally enrolled diamond, the five plus the four being on my top line. Um, and then the diamonds under him, I'm getting 5% plus 2% and he's getting the four since they're on his top line. So I'm gonna let Mary explain that more because she'll explain that better than me. But I, I do think it's important to know those of you that have your spouses out of your strong leg, anyone that pops diamond under your spouse, you're getting, you're getting 7%, they're getting 4%. Um, any diamonds on your top line that are your personally enrolled, you're getting 9%. If they are not your personally enrolled, you're getting 4%. Whoever enrolled them, if they're a diamond or above, is getting 5%. If their enroller isn't a diamond or above, nobody's getting that 5%. That's just going in the black pot of how it works. But um, anyone that is personally enrolled to you, you do get that extra 5%. Yeah, I guess what yeah, I would... Yeah. Yeah, what I would add, because I know we've got obviously people that are they're newer to leadership. So when you're a diamond, um, when you have a diamond pop under you, it's really, I mean, whether they're personally enrolled or not, it's really an imperative, honestly, to be pushing the double. Because once you hit double, um, you're going to be getting 4% on that diamond, even if they're not personally enrolled. And then if they are personally enrolled, like Brittany says, you're adding that five. So that's 9%. I mean, so just think about it. If a normal diamond has 10,000 um, GV and you're getting 9% as a double, that's a $900 boost to your check just because you had somebody go diamond under you. Or even if they're 4%, that's a $400 boost to your check. So um, for me, as I see, if you, you know, like for example, on my team, I have a double diamond with a double diamond under her. And she's getting, you know, she's getting 4% on everything under that double diamond, um, except for that last, you know, that, that, the diamond that, that's, that's so, that's, it's too many words. We need pictures, but <laughs> I need like a little pencil here, but she's, so she's getting 4% on the woman that is double diamond under her, but then that woman's diamond she's not getting four percent on anymore so when i see that happen usually that means that's a when somebody's matched or ranked underneath you you really want to push to the next rank so if she then goes triple you can see here in the triple line she's going to get two percent on that bottom diamond and so um basically the upshot of the generationals is you know, you're always going to max things. If you have leaders popping a diamond above whatever, you always want to really push and be smart about getting to the next level because that's how you're going to max out your generationals usually. And like Brittany, again, I built my dad as a very strong leg, um, almost presidential now. And so I'm getting those double paychecks under him and under, and then the 5% because they're personally what are going to me. So, um, that, that's a really great uh, way to kind of double dip if you have, spouses. But like I said, for generationals, what I would really focus on is, are, are you um, going to the next level when your leaders start popping diamond or double diamond? Yeah. 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 Okay. Does anybody have, did anybody have questions? Let me see. Okay. Yeah. So, and I think like the biggest thing, like I was saying is it's not who you should pick and choose to work with, but just more incentive to help you build leaders, to help you reinforce like why you want people to go diamond that are on your team. Okay. Um, it, you know, I remember feeling intimidated after I went diamond of like, Oh my gosh, like my team is, I, 
like, is my team going to be better than me? Like I literally remember feeling that way because I'm red um, and I'm competitive. But I think that you have to realize like, that's the whole point. Like the goal is to have a team that is ranking up to diamond, that is ranking up to double, that is going and you're going because your guys' success is like imperative to each other. And that's the coolest thing about the business, you guys. So um, just make sure that you are literally just encouraging everybody on your team to go diamond and help their leaders go diamond and get everybody fast started along the way. I love this tip about stacking. Um, and I, that's something that I've, that I implemented and I got more fast starts than I've ever gotten in my life this last month. Um, because I started stacking cause before it was like, okay, we're going to just place for promotions before one promotion is solid. And so get that promotion solid. And I've shared this like a couple times in the last couple of days, but um, I want to share it again because I think you guys can hear it but with, I think Mary Beth told me this, but if you are building like your dream house, okay. If you're building this dream house, right? Like you have granite countertops, like all this amazing marble backsplash, like amazingness that you are putting into this house and it's on a beach. Okay. And that you're, you obviously need a solid foundation for the house, like to, to have four solid foundations to hold it up when the water comes and all this stuff. Right. But the builder comes to you and he's like, okay, well normally just code standard code is to call for four. But if you want, we can take a little bit more time. It's going to you know, it's going to take a little bit more time to complete and it'll cost you a little bit more, but it's going to make it so much more solid if we do eight. So if we do like double on each and what are you going to do? Like, of course you're so eager to move into your dream home and like, you can't wait for it to be done, but this is your dream home. You guys, this is something that you're building and you're putting time into and, and that you're investing into. And so in the grand scheme of things, if it takes, you know, a month or two longer to, to do that, to know that you're sitting on something that's so much more secure, you're going to do that. Okay. Even, even though like the, the eagerness in you is going to be like, Oh, okay, fine. Like I'm going to do this, but I'm still annoyed that I have to wait a little bit longer to get it done. You're going to choose to build your house on a more solid foundation. Why in the heck don't we view our business this way? Get your business on a solid foundation because this is your future. Okay. Your future is sitting on this. So get it on a solid foundation, stack, build distributors, help other people. That's what we get to do, you know, and you're building your own check and you're only helping people. So that's the analogy. I'm all about analogies. So that's the analogy that I use um, in my own head when I'm making decisions of, okay, is this solid enough for me to say I'm comfortable? Let me, let me, let me go over. Let me, let me just go ahead and move on. And am I good with this? Because I think so often we're like, okay, I'm charted. Now let me move on to the next rank. Okay. I'm charted. Let me move on to the next rank. And you guys, we don't get paid based on what we're charted as. We don't get paid based on what we're charted as. We get paid based on what rank we're hitting. And so just be sure that you're considering that when you um, are placing and asking for advice from different people um, that have different mindsets as you and different leaders, it's good to get, you know, some, some different opinions and seeing, you know, maybe they're, they're, they'll see something that I'm not. Um, so I'm super excited. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Does anybody else have any more questions? Um, Cheyenne, do you have any more questions? You weren't on here. So I just had to start asking questions, bro. Okay. You weren't even on here. I don't know what happened to you. Oh, she said, oh, my service is whack. Yeah. Excuses, excuses. She's probably making out with her boyfriend in the car and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you. Um, Okay. If anybody um, has questions or anything, don't ask me. Mira Dinning, Brittany Hayes, they'll have all the answers. Um, I love you guys. Have an awesome night. Bye.